Fractal Venturi fans love radiators. Yes, they do. Excellent! Welcome back everyone, today I've got a graphics card review for you. MSI's take on the AMD R9 390X, the new GPU that requires you to use air quotes when you say new, because let's be honest, it's not really a new GPU, it's a slightly more refined 290X. I do actually have a couple AMD Fury X cards which are new, but you'll have to subscribe to see my upcoming video on that. The R9 390X uses a Hawaii GPU based on 28 nanometer GCN architecture and aside from AMD changing the code name from Hawaii to Grenada, eking out a little bit more clock speed on the GPU and the GDDR5 and doubling the standard memory allocation from 4 gigabytes all the way up to 8 gigabytes, there's not a ton of difference between the 290X and the 390X. Well actually there is the price, at $430 this card sits right between Nvidia's GTX 970 and GTX 980, maybe a little bit too close to them at times which makes them nervous and uncomfortable. Should Nvidia be concerned? Let's find out. Now I think MSI deserves a lot of credit for their design here on the Gaming HG because this card looks beautiful. From the edgy aggressive silhouette of the Twin Frozer 5 custom cooler to the sleek black backplate, it's got the aesthetic chops to look nice and powerful in any high-end gaming system, particularly if that gaming system is red and black, of course. MSI also designed their own custom PCB for this card, which uses military class 4 components like solid caps and super ferret chokes to ensure long-term lifespan and reliability. I've been a fan of MSI's Twin Frozer coolers for quite some time, and although we have seen version 5 here on a few other cards, it does a very effective job at cooling, and is certainly not as long in the tooth as, say, Nvidia's reference design that's been around since the original Titan. You have two Torx fans with a special dispersion fan blade design, uh, which is basically designed to maximize airflow over the heat sinks. What MSI calls their super pipe technology, which is a fancy way of saying that they've optimized the location of the heat pipes and the layout of the heat pipes to maximize cooling efficiency. And of course, the dense aluminum fin array down there giving you flirtatious looks from behind the red and black shroud. Now these two fans do not spin up at all until the GPU hits 60 degrees Celsius, which MSI calls Zero Frozer, and the fans can also spin independently of one another depending on where cooling is needed, which MSI calls Hybrid Frozer. In practice, this card never got hotter than about 77 degrees Celsius, even with a bit of an overclock. The fans do ramp up a touch at that temperature, but the noise level was still very low and would barely be noticeable if it was installed in a case. I was testing on an open test bed. Beyond the cooler though, there is an 8-pin and a 6-pin peg connector for power. No crossfire fingers because those are for poor people with pre-Hawaii cards that are not needed anymore. Although I guess I should point out that this is capable of up to 4-way crossfire theoretically. Uh, just keep in mind that this is a 3-slot cooler, so probably 2 or maybe 3-way will be the maximum number of this card that you will be able to fit in any one computer. You've also got video outs on the video out end, including two dual link DVIs, a DisplayPort 1.2, and an HDMI 1.4. Sorry, no HDMI 2.0 here, so stick to the DisplayPort out if you want 4K at 60 hertz. MSI also brings their gaming app to the party, and while I can't say I adore it as much as MSI's Afterburner utility, which you can of course still use to overclock this card manually, the gaming app does have easy tuning buttons which enable preset OC, gaming, and silent modes that will bump up or reduce the clock speed to give a bit more power or to keep things a bit quieter. There's a max fan button which will give the card a blast of air for a few moments to cool it down quickly, and you can also change between the uh, different display color profiles to reduce blue light fatigue with the eye rest feature. Finally, you have some control over the LED light on the card, and you can switch between five modes. There's flashing, double flashing, and random. Uh, I can't really see myself using these personally, but I will say that on, breathing, and off do seem useful to me. Let's run down the vital stats before we proceed to some benchmarks. Uh, if you remember a couple minutes ago, I said that the 390X memory amount has been doubled to 8 gigabytes. That's still on a 512-bit bus, but it has been cranked up to 6,000 megahertz effective speed, and MSI turns that up even a little bit more to 6,100 megahertz for an out-of-the-box 6.1 gigabits per second of available bandwidth. The GPU clock speed for the 390X was increased from 1000 MHz to 1050 MHz. MSI again goes beyond that with their custom card running at 1100 MHz in OC mode. Uh, everything else remains pretty much the same as the 290X with 2816 stream processors, 176 texture units, 64 ROPs, and 44 compute units. 
For my benchmarking test bed, I'm running an Intel 5930K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws 4 DDR4 memory at 2666, an EVGA X99 classified motherboard, a Kingston HyperX Savage 240 gigabyte SSD, a Rosewell Tachyon 1000 watt power supply, and Windows 8.1 64-bit. I'll be comparing the MSI R9390X to the closest competition on the NVIDIA side, the GTX 970 and GTX 980 from EVGA, and since I have factory overclocked GPUs all around, I'm gonna just leave them at their out of the box factory overclock speeds for testing. And now, here they are, the benchmarks. And those were benchmarks. So based on the price point, the 390X is performing right about where it should be. It's beating out the 970 in pretty much every test and sneaking up just behind the 980 like Fractal Josh at a, well, pretty much anywhere, I guess. The location doesn't really matter when Fractal Josh is sneaking up behind you. On the plus side for the 390X though, you've got performance. It comes very, very close to the GTX 980 and even beat it, along well, Crisis 3 at least. Uh, you've also got the sexy design in the back plate and a price that seems much more competitive than the 290X of last year. More on the 290X in just a moment though. On the minus side, eight gigabytes of GDDR5 is nice, but where you'll really need it, which is 4K, the GPU is going to lag behind. I do have to wonder about the crossfire situation with this card though, that could be interesting. There's also the bulkier 2.5, or you might as well say three slot card design, um, which is just larger than average. And probably the biggest negative is that the power consumption is still high for this card. I was hitting around 500 watts of power draw maximum for the whole system with the 390X, whereas the 980 would only pull maybe 360 to 380 max. Ultimately, I am just really torn about this card. I mean, it's sexy, it's powerful, it's got tons of memory, and it doesn't really put out too much noise. At the same time though, the power draw is still pretty high, and the 390X can't be recommended for 4K gaming with graphics intensive titles at least, making the eight gigs of GDDR5 less useful. It's nice to see that with some refinements, the Grenada chip formerly known as Hawaii can nip at the 980's coattails and even surpass it on occasion. I will say this though, if your GPU budget is around $400, and especially if you're gaming at 1440, which I think is a good resolution to be gaming at right now, Nvidia doesn't really have an answer for the 390X. Unless power draw is a major concern for you, the 390X can give you a lot of bang for your buck, and I have no problem recommending MSI's take on it. Before you pull the trigger though, do yourself a favor and check on the 290X, because they're selling for a lot less now, and if you get a third party design, you can probably overclock it to magically make it a 390X, only with four gigs of memory instead of eight. One last consideration is that AMD has recently enabled crossfire between the 290 and 290X and the 390 and 390X. So if you've already got one, you maybe now have a few more crossfire options if you're looking to upgrade. But let me know what you guys think of this card in the comments. Uh, hit that like button while you're down in that general area. And you can also check the description for links to my store for shirts and mugs and glasses. Uh, my Amazon affiliate code link is also down there. You can click on that before you buy things if you were awesome. That's all for this video though, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, thank you for watching.